Hi, and welcome again to my physics online video lecture series. Today's video, we're going to be talking about wave interference and superposition. Um, and so uh, basically, this answers the, the uh, question, or, or maybe I should say begins to answer the question, what happens when two waves collide with each other, or more, but I'm going to limit myself in this discussion to two waves interfering with each other. Um, so in order to get the most out of this video, you should at this point have already watched my other videos about um, traveling waves and a wave on a string and all that. Um, we're kind of assuming you already know the um, basic parameters of a wave and, and what traveling waves look like and do and so on. Um, so with that in mind, now we ask what happens if you have two waves which interfere with each other? And recall that uh, one way of looking at a wave is, uh, let's say you have a wave on a string, uh, because that's a nice easy example, and this is true of other wave types as well, but let's say that we have a string. Okay, and the string should be like this um, at equilibrium, and you end up with a wave that at some moment in time uh, looks like this blue uh, sine wave. Okay, so what is it um, that is going on here? Well, basically, if you had a very, very high speed camera, uh, and you took a snapshot of the string with this wave on it at this moment in time, you'd get a picture that looks basically like the blue. Now suppose that we look at this wave and, and ask, okay, um, this wave might be represented by y equals y max times the sine of the wave number times x, uh, minus the wave's uh, angular frequency times time, plus maybe some phase offset. Uh, for example, if this is at time zero, the phase offset might be zero. Um, and again, recall that, that basically what we have here is the y direction here and the x direction here. Now let's say that we decide to um, interpret this equation or interpret this wave as a set of instructions, okay? So in some sense, what this is telling me is these are the instructions for where each part of the string should be given, um, essentially like how far along the string are you or, or, or where, where are you looking? So like this particular piece of string um, is my x, and it says, okay, go to here at this particular moment in time, okay? And so this wave is kind of like a, a set of instructions for where each part of the string should go. And you can also figure out um, how fast each portion of the string is moving uh, for what it's worth. That would be given by V, let's call this uh, the transverse speed or something like that, or, or maybe the uh, oscillation speed for each section. Um, that would end up looking like negative omega naught y max um, times the cosine of k wave x minus omega naught t plus initial phase. And you could also get the acceleration um, for each piece. Essentially, it's like this, the speed and acceleration of which that piece happens to, at that moment in time, be oscillating up and down. So this one ends up looking like negative omega naught squared times the max times the sine of the wave number times your position minus your frequency times time plus your initial phase. Um, so in any case, it's sort of like you could think of this as an instruction or a set of instructions um, for 
each point along the string. And um, now what we want to do is essentially have a second wave, which is going to collide with the first one. So maybe our second wave, and I guess I'll just draw it in here in uh, green. Maybe the second wave happens to look more like this. All right, so the second wave is basically like the first wave in this case. It's just kind of offset in phase. It may also have a different amplitude. It may have a different wavelength. So, you know, maybe maybe it actually happens to look more like this. So here's a different amplitude um, and also a different wavelength. So this new wave, this green wave that I've just drawn here, could now be given by the instructions, we'll call this Y2, we'll call the first one Y1, could be given by Y2 is equal to Y2 max uh, times the sine of KW2X minus omega naught to time plus your initial phase offset two, uh, where the first ones are uh, ones, one, 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 one. And, you know, we'd have to go through and essentially add that subscript to all of these terms as well for consistency's sake. Notice that X and T, the actual position and time, do not get any new subscript modifications in all of this. Um, those are still the same. Okay, so let's say that these two waves are kind of together on this string. What does that really mean is happening? Well, in some sense, it's equivalent to each piece of string being given two sets of instructions, which that piece of string kind of has to follow both. Um, so, for example, like maybe this particular piece of the string, and let's uh, let's do this, let's duplicate it, or let's uh, redraw it. Um, whoops. So I have, again, my string out here, and maybe I happen to have uh, one wave that looks like this. And then my other wave maybe happens to look more like this. So we're up here, we're down here, Oop, didn't go down far enough though, we're down here, we're up here, we're down here. So now for one part of the string, maybe we want to know like where should this piece of string actually go? Well. The first wave is sort of like saying go this high, and the second wave is also saying go this high. So this piece should end up basically right here. And this one right here, this piece of the wave would end up here. This piece, we end up here plus this much more. So maybe we end up here, and so on. I'm not going to try to draw the whole thing here because I actually have a, a different thing that I can show. but. Um, your total wave, your superposed wave, or, or your interfered wave, we'll call it Y total, will just look like Y1 plus Y2 in all of space and in all of time. Now I'm going to go into the math of what that looks like in a different video. What I want to do with what's left in this video is actually kind of show uh, what that looks like in terms of a couple of sine waves. And I'm, to keep this kind of simple, because there's, you know, I don't want to make these videos too long or anything like that. Um, to keep it simple, what I have here is two waves that both have the same wavelength and they both have essentially the same frequency. 
and um, but I can control their phase offset. I suppose I could, in principle, also control their amplitude, but I didn't really want to do that. Um, so right now the two happen to be in phase. So I have a blue and a red, and you can see that the blue and the red are lined up peak to peak, peak to peak. You can see that the green one is what happens if you add the height of the blue plus the height of the red. And by the way, in principle, you could have the height of the blue on in one direction and the height of the red in the other, and so you'd have to kind of subtract the two. All right, so let's... Um, Let's see what happens. Right now, th these are in phase. The peaks and the peaks are in the same locations for blue and, and red. But I can change it so that, let's say, a local peak or, or local maximum of red and a local trough or local minimum of blue are uh, occur together. And, and, and same with the uh, peaks of blue and the troughs of red. So if I do that, let's say that I give a little phase shift. You can see now that the lowest values, the, the minus one values for blue and the highest value for red plus one happen at the same location. And the highest values of blue plus one and the lowest values of red minus one also happen at the same location. And so if you were to add up blue and red, you'd now get this green line here. So basically these two completely um, uh, completely destroy each other, if you will. So if we come back over here to our um, slides, I'm going to actually uh, paste this one in, and I'm going to put a little note on this. This is what's called destructive interference. A green line uh, has a value of zero everywhere, um, at least at this point in time. Um, and then if we go back and put the two exactly in phase again, uh, as we had here, um, so this one, let's put them back in phase. This is what's called constructive interference or, or, or perfectly constructive interference, maybe a better way of saying it, because it turns out that I can also make others that are constructive in their interference as well. Um, so let's label this constructive interference. And um, let's go back again and see what happens if we use a different value still. Like what if they're not exactly lined up peak to peak, trough to trough? Well. You know, maybe this happens to be like 0.25 um, uh, wavelengths of offset, something like this. You see how the two peaks are near but not exactly overlapping, and you get this green one. And if you look closely, you'll see that the green one is actually not as tall as it was when they're exactly overlapped. When they're exactly overlapped, it has a height of 2. When they're not exactly overlapped, when they have this much offset, it's actually about a little less than 1.85. And I can, you know, move them even farther apart and I get a even lower and wider green. And that's wave interference. Um, so that's it.